Hi, my name's Tom. Today we're going to reorganize my son's closet and we're going to take out the existing uh, bar and shelf to wire bar and shelf and we're actually going to go ahead and use an Ikea bookshelf and some uh, extra pieces, some extra wood and some poles and we're going to build a, a shelf organizer, a whole closet organizer for my son. So right now he's got a wire shelf and you can see it's full of stuffed animals and toys and all the stuff that he doesn't really play with anymore. He's got one clothing rack, um, a lot of empty shelves, a lot of empty clothes on there, a lot of empty hangers rather, uh, some old clothes, some clothes don't fit, so we'll clean all that out. And on the floor, he just has piles and piles of stuff. There was an attempt to organize some things with a crate, but that never actually went, went anywhere because it's actually empty, and there's just junk all over the place. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to organize this. We're going to take everything out. We're going to build an organizer, and then we're going to go ahead and put everything back in. You'll be amazed at how much extra space we actually have. And one more little quick introduction. Here is the actual bookcase we're going to use uh, to organize this closet. It's a Billy bookcase, and it's, uh, I believe it's 20 inches, 24 inches, one of those. Uh, they come in different sizes, different widths. We went with the, the middle width. Um, we get it from Ikea. I'm not going to show you how we built that. My 13-year-old son actually followed the instructions and built those all by himself, so I'm proud of him. Uh, and then I only took him about a half hour, 40 minutes, start to finish. So he built this, and we're going to use this in his closet. So now he has a little bit of buy-in uh, with the closet organization as well, and that's kind of key sometimes. Uh, so, okay, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, start prepping some wood. I got my painting shirt on just for painting some wood for the sides and you'll see how it all works together. And first things first, I'm going to take some quick measurements. I've already kind of done this, but I have noted two things. Um, first of all, the clothing bar is 12 inches off the back wall. That's important because you have to put the clothing bar in the correct spot if you want to hang uh, proper sized hangers. So I'll test it with some adult hangers just to make sure, but I think some of these are full size hangers or adult hangers. So that'll be fine. 12 inches off the wall is fine. And then the closet, uh, the depth is actually 28 inches. That's also important because what I'm going to need to do, this is just drywall, uh, sheetrock. So I don't know where the studs are in here, and the chances are of the studs lining up exactly with my 12 inch mark for my bar and for uh, some shelving is slim to none. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some cross beams, some wood in here, and I'm gonna tie it into this closet wall that I can then tie bars into, or I can go ahead and tie up or hang a shelf on. So I'm gonna go ahead and just measure, it's 28 inches across, I'm gonna go ahead and cut some shelf, some shelving supports for all this closet. Uh, and I already kind of mapped it out, sketched it out. I think I'm gonna need about six of them. So I'm gonna cut out six new closet uh, shelving boards and then go ahead and paint them. And then we'll be ready to actually start working on the actual closet. So I'm back in my messy basement workshop. I have my saw ready to go. I got my first board. And I'm going to go ahead and measure, like I said, 28 inches. Right to there. Give it a quick cut. Bingo, 28. Okay, so this is now my template, and now I need to just go ahead and cut uh, five more. All right, and through the magic of video, two seconds later, I now have six boards. Uh, some of these were actually old boards from another project that I had painted but didn't use, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to quickly sand up the ends, just hand sand them a little bit just so there are uh, only splinters on them, and then I'm going to go ahead and give them all a quick coat of white paint hence the painting shirt. And the white paint I'm using because the inside of the closet is white and I just don't want bare wood in there. I'd rather have some, some color, uh, just some color to kind of match and make it disappear. So again, I'm just gonna go ahead and quickly uh, sand these up, paint them, and then we'll be ready to actually start working in the closet because I just told my son to go clean his closet out. So that's what he's doing while I'm doing the actual construction work. 
Okay, and we're back. Uh, I painted the boards. They're actually drying right now. My son did clean out his closet. And as you can see, the only thing we actually have for organizing this entire closet is this wire rack here um, with three supports. And we have uh, a bar for hanging his clothes up. Uh, and actually, this is a major annoyance. These little things here would stop the hangers from going back and forth because it's kind of a support beam. So just kind of a wire thing. Uh, I got to rip this out right now. Um, kind of from experience, it's tied in with a bunch of one-way screws and bolts or uh, anchors. So I'm going to rip these things out, put leave great big holes in the sheetrock. I'm going to patch them up real quick. Uh, it's going to be in the back of the closet, so I'm not too worried about what it looks like. You didn't say action. Action. Better. All right. So now I put my closet, or I put my bookshelf into the closet. Uh, but the next thing is to kind of make sure that it's actually centered in the closet. So what I've done is I've kind of nudged it back and forth about 150 times to get the same equal distance on each side. Now you'll notice right now I've got about, let's see here, I've got about 19 and a half on this side, and I've got probably almost 20 on this side, or 19 on this side. So what you have to do is, because I'm sitting on a rug, the bookcase kind of moves around. So what I need to do is I need to level it out as much as I can, holding it, get my measurement, 19 and a quarter, Keep it level, about 19 and a quarter there. So I'm about center left and right. However, I still have to go ahead and make sure that my, right now my bookcase is leaning to the back of the wall. So what I want to do is make sure that it's actually level or equal off the wall. And what I did was I made like a little template here. And this is about two, two by fours. So it's about three inches thick. And when I put that on the back wall and go like this, I'm about level. Not quite, but, but just about level, and I'll, we'll, we'll go through that. But now, as I move this template down, down the wall, as long as the wall is fairly straight, it'll push my bookcase out. So the whole bookcase will be exactly three off the wall when it's level. So I'll do it on this side, and I'll kind of do it on the other side as well. And we'll do it on the other side as well. There we go. Push it against it. Again, it's about, I gotta move it in a little bit maybe. Uh, okay, there we go. So that's actually pretty good. So now I have it left and right when it's actually level. And I have it off the wall when it's level. So one last thing I have to check. Okay, I'm gonna let it go, I'm gonna let it slide to the back, okay? One last thing I have to check is to make sure that I have enough space for the, for the bar. So again, I want the bar to be at the 12 inch mark, it's about right here, but, you say, oh, it's not there, but however, when it's level forward, three inches off the wall, I've got plenty of room for my 12 inch. Let me see here. Uh, there. So my bar will be right here, which gives me time to put a, a spacer. So that's good. That's the bar for the hangers. The hanger, the center of the hanger bar will be uh, a lot of space. Okay. okay. All right, here I am at the bottom of the bookcase. Again, it still wobbles back and forth, but that's fine. What I'm doing is I'm going to use an L bracket. Uh, these things are steel, plenty strong to hold up a, a bookcase like this. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to use this little bracket, and I'm going to drive a, a screw into it. I'm going to hold it into the ground, into the, into the wood flooring. And then once I get the whole thing leveled up, then I will put a second screw in to kind of hold the bookcase in place. So the first thing is just kind of get the position. Again, I'm equal distance from either side so that it's in the center. I'm gonna put this down on the ground. I gotta drill, drill a hole, drill a pilot hole. Do carpet and plywood. I'm gonna use a quick speed change here. And I'm gonna put my screw in. I can kind of get it hand started because I have carpeting in there. Same thing with another one. But I'll put one on the other side, and then we'll go ahead and we'll we'll get the bookcase lined up, and then we'll put them on, screws them to the side. Okay, so now I have my floor brackets in place, 
and I am leveling out my bookshelf. I'm almost there. I'm using my template in the back. As long as I push my bookcase against that uh, uh, template, which is sitting against the wall, I should be exactly three inches off the wall. I can then go ahead and level myself out. And again, I'm pretty close. I'm going to twitch it a little bit. Um, might use a shim at the very bottom. Uh, but then once I get that in, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drive my screws in. So I'm going to make sure this thing's level, and then while I'm holding it level, I will drive in two screws, and that will literally hold the bookcase, two screws, not just one, it'll hold the bookcase uh, into that position, and then I'll go do it on the other side. I might still be off a hair here or there, but again, I'm going to have the clothing bars and the shelves to kind of push and hold everything in place. Okay. Now my bookcase is uh, pretty level and pretty even. So again, I have about 19 and a quarter on both sides. Uh, when I put this here, it's not quite level, but that's okay, because we're gonna put a bar in to kind of push it over a quarter inch. However, this way off the wall, it is uh, pretty level. It's actually floating about three inches off the wall. I have no bracers in there, but I put my floor, my floor brackets in, held the whole thing in. Here's what they look like. So it's just a bracket, L bracket, two screws, two screws, hold it in, that's good. I did end up using a little shim in the back just to kind of keep the whole thing level. Um, but now we're about ready to go with the next step, which is going to be the clothing bars. So the clothing bars, my son decided to have two clothing bars. We're going to put one at the top, and then we're going to put one in the middle. And to give space to make sure that your clothing actually fits, uh, you want to do about 40 inches about 39 or 40 inches off the floor for this one and then about 78 79 inches in the air for this one so it's going to be the top of the bookcase which is why Billy Billy bookcases are nice I can you can put two bars in so you're going to be about up here and then you're going to be eh, uh, somewhere right in here however to do that though I'm going to have to put some wood shelves some wood brackets over here that's those 28 inch pieces of wood that we cut and painted earlier so now I'm going to go ahead and put those in so that we can then go ahead and put our clothing bar in so that's our next step okay so now we're going to start putting these boards these boards on the side of the closet we're going to drive them in so they're nice and solid so we can put a clothing bar across and hang up our clothing but the problem is that we're also going to use these boards to hold a shelf that we're going to put across the entire bookcase so what I need to do is I need to make sure, so my bookcase is here, I'm just going to put a piece of wood here, I need to make sure that everything is nice and even. Oops. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bump it up because this is nice and tight. Ah, oh, there we go. That looks fairly level. Yeah. Yeah, we're almost too high now. down a slight bit. I gotta go a little bit of an angle here. But what I'll do is I have to move back and forth a little bit and just kind of make sure. See that side's a little higher than, than that side. So now what I can do is I can do this and it looks like that's gotta come up a little bit. Maybe that's gotta let's see that's gotta come up a little more. Oops sorry wrong way. Okay, this is the advantage of having a nice tight cut. I actually have a little bit of a electric superpower there because it still stay in place because it's nice and tight. All right, so that's even that way. Let's just double check this and make sure it's fairly even here. And that looks pretty good there. All right, so now we're going to go ahead and drive this board in. Okay, stop. Action. So as I was putting this together, I, I suddenly realized that I don't think these boards, these boards that I have left over, because we're all in quarantine right now, uh, these are actually wide enough for the project. I just realized that. Here's why. Here is my book, or here's my shelf that I'm going to put on top. That's fine. Now I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to use this piece of sample bar, and here's a, here's a bracket for that bar, and I'm going to put my... Because it has three holes, I want to put all three holes on the wood, keep it nice and solid, and I put my bar in, and there you go. There's, I'm ready for I'm ready for hanging up my hanger. However, here's a typical hanger. It won't fit unless I kind of jiggle it in just right and kind of get it to there. And then getting it out, the same thing. I can't pull it out. I have to actually twist and jiggle it out. 
So the problem is that I need to actually have either a wider board, which I've used in another closet, or put two boards here so that I can have two screws in one, one screw in the other, and I can have it low enough down to be able to fit. So I'm gonna to have to go ahead and cut some extra boards of these uh, and paint them white. But uh, that's how we're gonna handle that. We're just gonna put two boards in instead of one, but now I can actually hang up my hangers nice and simple. So it's a solvable problem. It's just a little extra work, but that's what happens sometimes. All right, so now we have two boards in place of one, and now you can see we can put this down here like this if we want. We can probably put it all down here. We have plenty of space for a hanger. I'll probably split the difference and do one on each, something like that. But now we put this in, I have plenty of space to put a hanger in, and I still have plenty of space to hang. Uh, it's just kind of how it worked, and that's fine. There's no stud actually in this wall at all, so I had to put the screws on the sides into the corner where there always are studs. So we're ready to go. I'm going to now go put two more boards down the middle one here, and then we'll start working on putting the bar up on, the, on this side. That's it. Okay, here's me getting the sun working. Okay, no. I can't tell if it's straight or not. There you go. You got You had it there. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to cut this uh, steel polished pipe or uh, clothing uh, bar, closet bar. Uh, what I'm going to go ahead and do is it's pretty thick, it's, it's, it's hard metal, so I'm going to actually, so I measured out 18 and a quarter inches, which is what I need to fit between my uh, the wall of my uh, bookshelf and then the wood placers that I put in there. And what I'm going to end up doing is using a uh, reciprocating saw with a brand new metal blade. Uh, I could do it with a hacksaw as well, but it'll take a while. I'm not sure if I have a metal blade for a hacksaw. Uh, so I kind of have my, my jury rigged uh, brace here. I'm going to use my I'm going to use my reciprocating saw and I'm going to be careful. Lay it right on the line. And the hardest part about this is kind of getting it started. I just slid around a little bit there. relatively clean cut. I'm going to go ahead and I'll file down the little burrs on there so it's not sharp just for how I put it in uh, and then I'll clean off the sticker and I'll be ready to go. Okay, now that I've cut my bar, I've actually already gone ahead and installed one of the brackets for the uh, first closet bar. And all I did was I measured 12 and a half from the wall, put that as the center point, and then went ahead and built this bracket around, or screwed the bracket in around it. And now I have my second bracket over here. Um, right now it's just held up with tension, it's just sliding around. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my level, and I'm going to make sure, this really, I'm going to make sure this closet bar is level and I'll stand back and kind of play around with it and I'm also going to measure it and make sure that it's exactly 12 and a half off of the wall uh, the center point is 12 and a half off the wall and then I'll go ahead and I'll drill this bracket in and then this bar which just kind of slides back in will actually kind of hold the it'll hold the bookcase in place left and right uh, and it'll make sure it doesn't slide back and forth either because it's kind of has a second uh, a brace because this is tied very securely into these these boards so just a little more leveling a little more measuring and i'll have my first bar up and then i'll go down and use my, my my second middle bar same idea cut the metal measure cut the metal put the brackets in and just kind of uh, rinse and repeat it's really not that difficult from from this point forward our closet's actually almost done and ta-da here is the finished closet organized we have clothing on the left and the right and the upper portions. We have a shelf full of, well, for the moment, stuffed animals, but we'll eventually put Legos and other games there. We have a, a, a larger area in the corner for swords and guns, because my son's into all that crazy stuff. And I want to show the one last piece here. Uh, this shelf across the top. This shelf was, we measured it across, painted it, put it on, and we, 
But we basically put screws into... We screwed into this base here that's holding up the uh, clothing rack. And then we went ahead and put screws into the uh, bookcase and then screws on the other side. So now the whole thing's kind of tied together at a center point. And you could easily climb this and it wouldn't move at all. Um, but you can see the nice, sh nice high shelf up there. We can put sleeping bags and other boxes and games and shoes and all kind of stuff up there. Uh, so there we go. There is the finished reorganized closet. We did clean a little bit of it out, but we have plenty of space for new clothing, plenty of space for hanging stuff. Uh, we even have a spot for shoes in the bottom there. Uh, so it's real nice and easy. The total cost of this project was probably only about $100 um, with the bars and the shelf, maybe 120 with some of the wood and lumber, but it really was not that expensive. It's a lot better than the 500 to to $1,000 that uh, closet companies try to charge you for all of this and it only took uh, four or five hours of back and forth work to do so there you go ikea closet or bookshelf in the middle a couple bars on the side with a little bit of wood just to kind of anchor them into the walls and a shelf across the top and you are done so again this is one idea for a organizing a closet you could obviously do it in a number of different ways uh my daughter has another closet which i'll show you in a second and that has exactly the same sort of thing bookcase in the middle with clothing shelves but she organized it differently we actually put shelves on one side and we just all we did was put the wood across the the, the side of the closet and we put multiple shelves and put some brackets on the bookcase Real nice and easy, same idea, it's good for organization, it's whatever you want in your closet. You could put the bookshelf to the side as well. Uh, be careful putting too far to the side because you may not be able to get to it according to how your doors are, are, are set up, so just kind of be aware of that. Um, but otherwise, really, uh, buying some off the, just buying some off the shelf bookshelves from, uh, from Target or Ikea and then using them with some simple hanger bars. It's much cheaper, it allows you much more customization, and it gives you some flexibility that you probably would not have if you actually used uh, any sort of a professional um, closet system. And it's much, much, much cheaper. And here's my uh, daughter's closet, same idea. We actually have a clothing rack here and here on the bottom, another clothing rack on the bottom, and then we have shelves in the middle. Her shelves are a little wider, but she has extra shelves, again, for more stuffed animals. And again, the shelf at the top. So same idea, just with shelves on the side. And again, you can see the boards are just tacked into the wall. They're tied into the wall. And the shelves just sit on top. Uh, then I have brackets underneath here. So again, structurally, you can do just about anything you want with, uh, with these things. Bookcase, couple bars, and you're good to go. Here's one more example. This is actually a walk-in closet. You can see my wife's walk-in closet. But same idea. I have actually uh, two walls, one here and one over here. And I actually have the same thing. I have a great big hanger bar, another hanger bar down the bottom. And then I have bookcases, on one on the side, and then one in the middle over here. Um, and she went ahead and covered some boxes with paper. But we, she has lots more uh, hanger space than she ever did before, as well as organizational space. Uh, so again, you can use these things for a lot of different a lot of different configurations, a lot of different ways you can use them. The wonderful part is that they're actually affordable. They're easy to put up. Only takes about a, uh, a couple hours for each closet section. So my wife's walk-in closet probably took about eight hours start to finish. Uh, it's a fun project. It's kind of neat to kind of get creative with it, and it's cheap. So go for it.